Hey, out on Tawakany, uh, trolling for white bass, <clears throat> catching some pretty good ones too. Uh, already dropped a client off at the dock. Was close to a limit, I think. He just didn't want any more, so we stopped. Um, I came back out and uh, I'm towing sumo spoons um, behind a uh, deep diving crankbait. That's actually weird. There's fish on it. Good lord. Looks like a good one too. What the heck? Huh, wonder how long that's been sitting there. Wasn't pulling. Is now. So uh, magic depth today is 15 to 18 feet. Trolling about three miles an hour. A little bit faster, a little bit slower. Oh, it's tangled up in my other rod. All right, just pulled over a school. And it looks like this one's on. Oh yeah, that's a nice fish. It's not as big as I thought he was gonna be. Still a keeper. Ow! Oh, sumo spoons are super sharp. Oh man, that's like the third time today I've hooked my thumb. Hey, you guys want some fish? Yes, sir. I'll hand you the bucket and then you can just give it back to me when you when you dump them. Doing good. How you guys doing? There's a lot in there. Uh, there's, I think there's like ten in here. Yeah. There's a. Uh, there's big schools of them, but they're moving around a lot. Yeah. Getting, I'm getting bites. Like, yeah. yeah. I'm getting all trolling. So I, I just dropped off a client that had a limit of 25, and now I'm just out fishing for myself. So. What are you using? Um, this time I'm going to put a uh, I'm going to put a swivel on before I put the spoon. I'm going to use a different spoon. I think I'm out of sumo spoons. Right now the shad on Tawakini are feeding on these little tiny, or the white bass are feeding on these little tiny shad. So the sumo spoons are really small and uh, they work really good. But uh, I just lost my last one. So what I'm going to try, put on my crankbait, and I'm going to put on about a two and a half foot leader. Get myself some extra for my knots. And now I'm going to put a chartreuse roadrunner on. I've not tried one of these trolling. <clears throat> the 
boat's turning and I'm going to let it I'm go back that way, but the pontoon boat has moved into my trolling path again. They keep seeing me catch fish, so they go to the spot where they see me catch it, which puts them right in my path when I turn around to go back. All right, 17 feet, doing two and a half miles an hour though, fast enough. And I didn't put on a swivel, because I forgot. Well, that Roadrunner's got that little blade on there. And it's also heavier than the sumo spoon, so it should go down a little bit deeper getting ready to go over the spot again where I keep finding the fish. All right, should be enough. Going too slow. Now my line probably got nicked up. Oh, it's on the bottom. I wasn't counting on that. Roadrunner, take that thing down that deep. Oh wow, that thing is really running deep. Scrape and bottom at 17 and a half feet. Count now to about 12. <clears throat> Just so I get them out about the right point. It's an estimate. had a tangle up back behind the boat. They're connected to each other. Fish, I think, wrapped them up. I got the fish, so. But it's getting hot. The schools of fish aren't real big. So if you stop and try to fish them, they move on you as soon as you stop. So trolling is definitely very effective right now if you want to put some fish in the boat. Um, I think most of the crankbaits generally go the way these are rigged, 15 to 18 feet. So I try to stick to that depth range, unless the fish are suspended. These aren't, they're pretty much hugging the bottom. But I can see the school show up on the graph like there's one showing up right now. It's a small one, but it's still, oh, there we go. There's a better school. So one of these two should get bit any second now. It's a pretty good size school. They're in 20 feet, so we should be reaching right down to them. Going a little fast, though. Doing three and a half. I should be doing closer to three. There's another school. So there's two schools back to back. So any second now. One of these two should get hit. There's another school. A lot of them on this point right here. Oh yeah, there's a ton of them. We're in 18 feet, it's the perfect depth, so. We've got a chartreuse on one and a silver on the other, but these sumo spoons I'll probably never buy again because the paint comes off them too quick. Um, I shouldn't have to repaint the lure. It's only caught, you know, a dozen fish, in my opinion, which is too bad because they work really well. Huh. I am shocked that I didn't get bit going through there. There's another school coming up. I'm just hugging the shoreline. I'm trying to stay in the same depth range watching the graph. Kind of hugging the contour lines. Try to stick between three and 3.15. Slower than that, they don't seem to want to hit it. They want it moving fast today. Hey, 
Hey, this is Scott Persick, Trophy Fish Outdoors. Out here today fishing on Lake Tawakany for white bass. We're doing some trolling because uh, they won't bite any other way today. I've tried. But the troll bite is on. So um, stay tuned. Lots of fish to be caught. One. Oh, there's a big school too. Where that one goes down. These look like bigger fish. Probably the first short of the day. Crankbait's not running right. You can give it a little bit of forward punch and then the bill will catch and dive down, hopefully straighten itself out. Well, oh, there we go. There's a the fish. Oh, yeah, he's the one. Oh, yeah. really like this chartreuse sumo. Diving down. Come on, dude. Got a little collection going back there. Get him up in the boat in a minute. Oh, right, here we go. We're going over a big school. Big, big school. Right where I marked, too. I don't know if that one's going to go down, but this one, yeah, just did. On this rod, I've got light line. I've got 10 pound test. It's probably a little light for this, but I think it allows the crankbait to dig down a little, wow, it came off. To dig down a little bit deeper. Oh shoot, I'm in 12 feet. There's fish everywhere. Oh, it's twisted. Come on, come on. There you go, uh, 10 feet. Shallow. Yeah, I'm going to have to reel that one in and fix it. It's not diving down the way it should be. And I'm only in 13 feet, so. Oh, there it goes. The other one's got a fish too. Double on. Come off. Came off when it flipped out of the water. This one's still on. <laughs> Yep. 
And now I'm over 28 feet, so I'll turn back in. Wrapped around the end. Line gets a little twisty if you don't use a swivel. And I didn't. I should have. But I've got like six fish in the in the back that I decided to throw on board. I'll probably give them to this some people in this boat up here. They're fishing. I don't really see them catching anything, but stop by and offer them some fish. But I could very easily catch a limit here this afternoon just going back and forth over this one area. Perfect day for it, too. We've got low pressure systems starting to work its way in. You see all the clouds. It's been bluebird skies forever. All right. Lining back up for another run. I'm out of the area that I was trolling before, so I'm going to turn. But when I turn, I'm going to turn a little bit slower, and I'm going to turn towards the deeper water, not towards the shallower water, because I don't want to get hung up. When you turn, your outside rod's going to move faster. Your inside rod's going to fall a little bit more because it's moving slower, and it gives the opportunity for them to cross behind the boat. So, like right now, this one's tight, but the one over there is getting kind of loose. You want to make a slow, gradual turn. Definitely keep the outside one in your sight so that it doesn't come back into your into your prop. You'll think you have a fish until you're just about schooled and realize that you got wrapped in the prop. Not that I've ever done that. <laughs> 